This lecture is about early European naval exploration. So now, Europeans wanted the luxury items that were only available in Asia and Africa. Since the land route was long and, let's be honest, annoying, the best way of achieving this goal was to develop travel by sea. The problem was that Europeans didn't know how currents or winds worked in the open ocean, but they tried anyway. Europeans on the Iberian Peninsula, which again is the area that now holds Portugal and Spain, were the first to adapt to different winds on the water. These Iberian sailors first traveled to the Azores and Canary Islands because of the convenient northeastern trade winds, which blew straight from Europe south to those islands. The problem was that in order to get home, they had to find a different route, since the winds would be blowing directly in their faces the entire way back. When you, all you have to work with is wind power, you go wherever the wind takes you. What they figured out was that the only way to get back to Europe from the south was to head northwest until the westerly winds that came up alongside North America and back towards Europe started to carry them in that direction. This was a major breakthrough in navigation. They now had a way of getting back and forth across the ocean and could anticipate where the wind was going to send them. The Azores, Madeiras, and Canaries were settled by Europeans, with the Portuguese creating the first plantations in the Madeiras. This is the first time that a region was used solely for the production of one crop, sugar, that would then be shipped back to Europe for sale. Because of the difficulty of the work on the plantations, the only workforce that was a viable choice was a slave workforce. The first slaves used on these islands were likely Jewish and Muslim slaves brought down from Iberia. They weren't yet using African slaves. As these Atlantic islands were settled, other Europeans used these islands as a stopping point on their way to the African coast. Prince Henry the Navigator, the son of the King of Portugal at the time, regularly dispatched ships to try to find a sea route to the Indian Ocean, where there were massive and lucrative trade networks. At the end of the 15th century, Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama finally reached India. Unfortunately, this was after Prince Henry died. However, there were benefits to sending all of those voyages. Portugal established numerous trade ports along the western coast of Africa. They were able to trade European manufactured goods for gold, ivory, and slaves. The Portuguese were actually the first to introduce black slavery to European society. By the time Columbus set sail for what he thought was Asia, Europeans had learned three key lessons of colonization. First, they learned how to transplant crops and livestock to new places. Second, they discovered that native peoples in the places that they discovered could be exploited. Think Africans in slavery. Third, they developed a plantation system that used slavery as its labor force. This was a resource that was both cheap and nearly unlimited. Okay, now we should talk about Christopher Columbus. Here's what you need to know about him. One, he was from Genoa, Italy. Two, he wasn't sailing for Italy, he was sailing for the king and queen of Spain, Ferdinand and Isabella, who were getting a little jealous of Portugal's success in the Indian Ocean. Three, he knew the earth was round. He just didn't get the size of the continents and the size of the oceans right. He just overestimated how large Asia was and underestimated how large the Atlantic was. Anyway, Columbus had sailed in August of 1492 with three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, and just over a month later, he landed in the Caribbean. Now, Columbus kept a journal during this traveling of what he saw when he landed in what would become known as the New World, or the Americas. You'll be reading sections from that journal in class, so we're not going to talk about it now, except to say that his observations and what he focused on fit the theme of what Europeans would be looking for in America for the next hundred years. I do, however, want to talk briefly about John Cabot. He was also a sailor from Genoa, but he sailed for England in 1497. Cabot was the first European to return with knowledge of the coastline of North America. Following Columbus and Cabot, several other explorers set sail for the New World, hoping to find the fabled Northwest Passage, which was a legendary, albeit non-existent, sea route through the Americas. Despite the overwhelming desire to reach Asia via the sea through a northwest passage, eventually explorers began to appreciate this new world. As Giovanni da Verrazzano put it, the American countryside is in fact full of promise and deserves to be developed for itself. The flora is rich and the fauna abundant. 
many would begin to agree with this sentiment over the next couple years. Don't forget, if you have questions, write a comment, bring it to class, make sure you fill in your identifications with all the things you learned, and take the quiz for video 1-4.